Well, welcome again to the Yul and Kyle podcast series. Uh, we've discussed pre sue letters, we've discussed uh, simple procedure, and now I'm joined by Denise uh, again uh, to discuss ordinary cause procedure. Um, Denise, what is ordinary cause procedure? Um, thanks, Stephen. Ordinary cause procedure is the procedure that we use um, for any actions where the sum due is uh, five thousand pounds or above, um, the, the ordinary cause procedure rules, as they are, have been in existence, believe it or not, since nineteen ninety three. Actually, both you and I are old enough to remember those rules coming into force, uh, and obviously there's been a bit of change um, over the years, but it's been around for a long time. And uh, is it, what's the kind of claim limit? for ordinary cause? So that, that's a good question. It's it's unlimited um, for ordinary cause. Um, sheriff courts in Scotland now have exclusive jurisdiction for all um, money claims up to and including £100,000. But be, beyond that, um, the sheriff courts and under ordinary cause procedure are still able to deal with, as I say, unlimited sums of money. Yeah, for those of you that are interested, you call that privative or privative uh, jurisdiction, the, the financial limits. Uh, I'm sure you're all thrilled to, to know that. It's just that I remember the Lord President of the Court of Session mentioning that, as this comes to mind, uh, Brian Gill. Um, anyway, would you say it's more formal than simple procedure? Simple procedures up to £5,000, is it a more formal procedure? You say? No, I would say it's less formal. I, I, th I think we did touch on this briefly when we looked at simple procedure. Uh, I think, again, counterintuitively, ordinary cause procedure is easier, quicker and more straightforward. Even although you could be dealing with actions involving millions of pounds. Yeah, and that's, I mean, yeah, I have to say I agree with you. Um, and without being at all critical of the powers that be in the Scottish government uh, and in the legal profession, I think possibly this has arisen because simple procedure is designed for the litigant in person to take their court actions and everything has to be spelt out uh, very precisely so that they, they follow the rules. and. In so doing, the rules really are very, very heavy. Yeah, I, mm -hmm. I, I, I agree yeah. with that. Um, uh, anyway, if, on the assumption we are going to be raising an action for, let's say, £10,000, um, would you carry out any checks before drafting the writ on you know, to establish who the debtor is? Yes, we, are, we absolutely would. And again, we touched on this when we talked about simple procedures. So we would carry out pretty much exactly the same checks. We would do the credit checks, the insolvency checks, um, and we would also want to be very clear that we were suing the right party. So as the debtor, a limited company, an individual, sole trader or partnership. And as, as we said in the earlier podcast, it's surprising how often clients aren't able to give us precise information. So we might need to um, do a wee bit of digging or investigative work to make sure that we're raising the action against the, the the right party because if we don't, that can have pretty significant effects later on down the line when we come to look at enforcement. Oh, absolutely. Uh, so on the assumption that we are going to be raising this court action for let's say ten thousand pounds, I've heard mention of an initial writ. What is that? So the initial writ, I suppose, in 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 simple terms, is the claim form or or or, or the closest um, to the claim form that we have under ordinary cause procedure. Unlike simple procedure, where we're populating a, a statutory form, the initial writ is something that we generate. Um, now, obviously, we have templates for different types of action, but it's a it's a bespoke document for the particular action that we're raising. Um, in practical terms, it contains very similar information to that contained in the claim form under a simple procedure in terms of the parties, the amounts outstanding, um, the, the details as to why we're raising in 
a particular court, so covering jurisdiction and, and the legal basis for um, our assertion that, that, that the sums claimed are due, um, whether that's a say, contract for supplier services and payment not having been made. I mean, basically, it's like the four W's, who, what, where and when. Yes, exactly. Yeah. Uh -huh. um, and I'm assuming that you do require the client's assistance with this in as much as we're relying on them to give the correct information. Very much so, yeah. So, Denise, you've now drafted the initial route. How do you send that to the court? So, I mentioned earlier in relation to simple procedure that we can upload claim forms online to the, 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 the civil portal. Um, Unfortunately, we're not quite sophisticated for ordinary procedure. What we have to do is, is send the initial writ by email to the court. Um, so that again, that's a bit better than pre-COVID, um, but hopefully in time we'll be able to submit initial writs um, via the, the, the portal. So at the moment it, it's submitted um, by email. Can I just, just for the sake of clarity, submitted by email, not hard copy? Not hard copy. No, so that so that's the, the, the post COVID improvement, if you like. Right. OK, well, I, I have to say that does sound sensible. Um, OK, so you send the writ to the court by email. What does the court then do? So the court will just carry out its fairly rudimentary checks. Um, they just make sure that the initial writ contains what it needs to contain will check that we're actually raising it in the correct share of court and they'll also check that we've paid the appropriate fee. So do they send it back to us? They do, yes. Right. They, they send it back to us with a warrant um, and that is our authority to serve. So unlike um, simple procedure, we do not get a timetable. Um, we just get a warrant to serve the initial writ on the defender as the opposing party is known under ordinary cause procedure. Um, it's then up to us when we serve it. There's, there's no date fixed for when we have to have effective service by. In fact, under the, the rules, we have a year and a day to serve the action uh, once it's been warranted by the court. But obviously, in most cases, clients will want us to press on and have it served as quickly as possible. Um, now, just like in simple procedure, we would try and serve by recorded delivery first, and if that's not successful, we would serve by sheriff officer. Um, now, the, the key time period, if you like, um, under ordinary cause procedures, once we know the initial writ has been served on the defender, whether by a recorded delivery post or by sheriff officer, the defender then has 21 days from the date of service to decide if they're going to lodge some sort of response or defence in the action. I mean, that really is quite incredible. And that's picking up on the point that you made in a previous podcast, which is it's far quicker to get to a decision or judgment in ordinary cause actions than it is in simple procedure. Um, so that actually I would say is very refreshing. Uh, so that's very positive and that's good news. Uh, and, and again, I know we, I raised this point in, a, in the previous broadcast, but I think it is very, very important. Uh, what do you do if you only know the debtor's business name? That's not a problem um, it, in Scotland. I, I know that it can be challenging elsewhere in the UK, but in Scotland, if we just have a business name and we don't know at the point of raising whether there's one or 21 people sitting behind that business name, it doesn't matter. We can just sue the business name. So, for example, Yule and Kyle. Um, and down the line, once we get to the point of having a decree where we are then able to enforce against the one or 21 people that sit beside that. OK. That sit behind that trading name. OK, Denise, tell me, what is a decree in absence? How do we apply for it and what about expenses? So a, a decree in absence is 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 what we get um, if the defender 
does not lodge any form of response. So in practical terms, once we know the initial writ has been served, we sit tight for 21 days. Um, once that 21 days has come and gone, we then check with the court uh, to see whether any response has been lodged. As with simple procedure, the defender should tell us if they're lodging a response under the rules, but they very often don't. So we would we would just by default, we would check with the court after the 21 days to make sure nothing's been lodged. Assuming nothing has been lodged, we then apply for um, what's called decree in absence. And that simply means that the decree has been granted without any response um, or appearance having been entered by the, the defender. Um, we complete uh, what's called a minute um, asking for decree to be granted and we have to submit that to the court. Um, as part of that minute, we're asking for not only the principal sum, we're asking for any interest that we've said is due, whether that's just straightforward statutory judicial interest or interest that's due as a result of the party's contractual terms. And we also ask for expenses to be awarded as well. Um, so once we have submitted that minute uh, to apply for decree in absence, we normally, a bit like simple procedure, we normally get the decree within two to four weeks. Um, in fact, under ordinary cause procedure, the, the courts can't issue the decree until 14 days has passed, just in case there, there's going to be an appeal of some sort, although that's very unusual. Um, so we would expect to get the decree in absence within about two to four weeks. Unlike simple procedure, we're good to go once we have it. We don't then need to sit for a further 28 days before we can do anything with it. Yeah, I, w I wonder how long it's going to be until that 28 day hiatus is going to apply to ordinary cause, mm -hmm. but just that place. amongst ourselves, don't tell anybody, yes. anyone that's listening. Uh, anyway, if if the um, the debtor, um, in fact, I think you call them the defender in ordinary we cause do. procedure, yes. uh, if they admit the debt, um, are they able to make an application to pay by instalments? And if and you know, who would that apply to? Yes, so so uh, akin to what we talked about briefly under simple procedure, if the um, defender is an individual um, or sole trader, they, they can apply for time to pay um, to the court. They, they complete a form. Um, they have to provide a certain amount of information about their financial circumstances and that application should also be sent to us. In practical terms, we would then take instructions on whatever proposal has been made um, and our clients will either accept it or reject it. If they reject it, then a hearing is fixed um, to determine um, whether the, the defender's offer is, is a reasonable one or not. James, what happens if the debtor disputes the debt? So if the, if the defender is disputing um, the debt, then within the 21 day period that I mentioned already, uh, the defender has to lodge what's called a notice of intention to defend. And once that happens, the court then issue a timetable for further procedure. And usually the first step in that timetable is for the defender to lodge written defences. And then, you know, there's a, there's a whole process that's followed that's not part of this particular um, podcast. Once the claim has been defended, uh, we would obviously discuss matters with our clients and, and take instructions from them. Depending, as you can imagine, on the value of the claim, we might be saying to clients, look, this is now very quickly going to become uneconomical to pursue very much further. So we might be recommending let's try and sort something out. That seems very sensible, Denise. Um, final question. Representation in ordinary actions. Can the parties represent themselves or must they have a lawyer, a solicitor? They must have a lawyer under um, ordinary cause procedure. Straight, short answer to that. Um, I'd like to thank you very much again, Denise. Thank you, uh, and I hope um, our listeners have gleaned some more valuable information about the court processes in Scotland. Thank you.